Every culture in the world has its own soup. There's borscht from Russia, cozuela from Chile, bouillabaisse from France, and miso soup from Japan. But closer to home, I'll teach you how to stir up a pot of everyone's favorite, chicken soup. Then learn how to transform an assortment of garden vegetables into a hearty minestrone soup. Finally, an impressive yet simple recipe for a brilliantly colored spinach cream soup. Soup's on. So let's start with classic chicken soup. I know that your mom had her version and your next door neighbor had her version. Well, this is our version and the uh, final result is really delicious and useful. So start with one chicken, a nice three and a half to four pound chicken, organically grown if possible, uh, cut into eight pieces. And use a pot that is just large enough for all the ingredients. So I'm putting all the chicken in the larger pieces towards the bottom. And chicken soup is different from chicken stock in that we are using chicken with lots of meat on it. The meat is what gives more flavor. If we were using just assorted bones and backs and necks, uh, you would get your stock, but you wouldn't get the rich, rich flavor of this chicken soup. So there we have the chicken in the water and start with cold water too. And Next, we have our vegetables. One carrot, and these vegetables are the vegetables for the flavoring, and they really won't be the vegetables that you will eat. These will be diminished in flavor by the time you finish cooking the soup, and you'll want to put fresh vegetables in at the last minute into the clear stock. So this is one parsnip. My mother always put parsnip in hers. Parsnips add a subtle sweetness to the chicken soup. Very, very flavorful. I love it a lot. One yellow onion cut up into chunks. Two ribs of celery cut into chunks. Some fresh thyme, some fresh parsley. And about a quarter of a teaspoon of peppercorns and one or two bay leaves. And we're, we could use just a tiny bit more water in here. You want to keep the chicken covered by one inch during the entire cooking process. And we can also add at this time one teaspoon of kosher salt. Bring this to a boil, reduce to a simmer, skim, and cook for about 16 to 18 minutes. A thermometer should read about 160 degrees in the breasts and 165 degrees in the legs and the thighs. Uh, and you'll have perfectly cooked chicken. Now, I've diligently been skimming during the last 18 minutes. Skimming is very important since the impurities from the chicken will cause the broth to become cloudy and you want to get rid of that. The vegetables have become very soft and they've imparted their flavor to the broth and that's why these are only soup vegetables. We're going to add garnish vegetables at the end. So it looks good, it looks very clear. And uh, because this has been cooking for almost 18 minutes, I am going to remove the pieces of chicken. Just take them out and put them on a baking sheet like this because they have to cool so that you can then take the meat off the bones and the skin off the meat. What goes back is just nice, large chunks of chicken. So now it's time to pull off the meat. We want the chicken to cool a little bit just so slide the skin off. This goes into the discard bowl. And if you're like I am and have lots and lots of animals, uh, you can use a lot of the discard for the animals. Grind it up or cut it up into small pieces for the dogs. They love snacks. And you can put the bones right back into the broth. If some of the chicken seems to be a little underdone, don't worry because it's going to get cooked a little bit longer in the soup when you add the uh, garnish vegetables back into the broth. Mm, that's a nice piece of breast meat. And there's not much meat on those little wings, but wings are my favorite part of the chicken. So there. So now turn this back on and simmer for an additional hour. So now strain 
the soup. It's cooked for an hour longer and uh, you want to get out all the bones and all the cooked vegetables. And you should be left with approximately six cups of broth. And I like to press a little bit to get all the liquid out. And the reason I'm not pouring the whole thing into the strainer is, heaven forbid if you miss. And this is all discard. Look at the great color, it's a beautiful color. And now, with less liquid in, you can feel free to pour. And we have just about six cups of lovely broth. Now this should stand the fat will rise to the surface if there's any more, and straining out all these aromatics will certainly result in a clearer, cleaner broth. Now, chicken broth, like this, can be made up to three days in advance uh, if refrigerated separately like this, with the broth in one container, the chicken tightly covered in another. And then you can proceed with your soup right before you're ready to serve it. So I'm almost finished. A oh, little piece of the wishbone. Uh, finished shredding the meat. I'm chunking the meat, not really shredding it. I think it's so pretty when you get big, nice chunks of chicken like that in your soup. And now we have a little fat on the broth. I'm going to take a spoon and just take this fat off the top, leaving us with a very nice clear broth. So see, we got a lot of fat off the top. That will be discarded. Now this can go right back into your stock pot. And I pour off, leaving that little bit of solids in the bottom. I don't want to put that in because that is a little bit of cloudiness that can be discarded. And your vegetables, two carrots cut up into quarter inch pieces, two ribs of celery cut up, one medium to small parsnip cut up, and these will be your garnish vegetables. Cook for oh, anywhere from five to eight minutes until the vegetables are fork tender. So now you can add all the chicken, which is quite a lot, or you could reserve a little bit for chicken salad for tomorrow. Uh, just warm until the chicken is heated through and ladle it out. You could add some cooked rice to the soup at this point. You could spoon it over rice. Any way you choose, you will love what this tastes like, and it is healthy and good for you. Enjoy. One of everyone's favorite soups is minestrone, and this is a classic minestrone. It's a beloved Italian soup that's hearty and healthy. Minestra generally means bigness. And this is big because it has so many ingredients. And they can vary. It includes lots of vegetables, leafy greens, and beans. The foundation of flavor uh, in a minestrone soup is uh, something called a sofrito. It's a common element in Italian soup making, and it consists of a trio of celery, carrots, and onion. Uh, and we'll get to the sofrito, but let's do the beans first because this is what you have to do the day before you make your soup. Uh, you need three quarters of a cup of cannellini beans, and they're really white Italian kidney beans. Dried, uh, they're plump and they're creamy tender beans when they are reconstituted with moisture and they soak up lots of flavors in which they're cooked. So uh, cover this with water water to cover like this and just let them sit out overnight eight to 12 hours and they plump up to look like this. Look at the difference. Big difference. They were more than double in size and uh, so now these are ready to cook. Strain these. This water can be discarded and get this right into a deep pot with a half of an onion. Take the outer skin off the onion and you can cut this into just three or four chunks. One bay leaf. 
no salt. Salt tends to toughen the beans. Uh, and eight cups of water. If you're a vegetarian, stop here. But if you're not a vegetarian, um, ask your butcher for the end of a prosciutto. This has skin, fat, and a little bit of the prosciutto meat. And cut this into two or three pieces and add this to your water. So now bring this to a boil and reduce the heat to a simmer and cook for approximately 30 to 45 minutes until the beans are uh, to your taste. Al dente for some and well cooked for others. Now the beans have cooked. They're tender, even plumper than they were after the soaking. Uh, they're even cracking a little bit to indicate the nice creamy interior. I'm letting those cool a tiny bit while I start the sofrito. Third of a cup of olive oil. I remember my first introduction to sofrito was in Camayori in the mountains. And the lady of the house where I was staying made sofrito for almost everything. Her tomato sauce made from the fresh tomatoes in her garden started with a sofrito. Everything she cooked started with a sofrito, which is one stalk of celery cut up into very fine dice, one onion cut up into very fine dice, and one carrot. This is the holy trinity of Italy. And if it had green pepper instead of carrot, it would be the Louisiana version of sofrito. So stir this until everything becomes translucent. This will take about 25 to 30 minutes. And now we can strain the beans. I have a strainer set over a measuring cup. You're gonna pick out the ham and the onion, leaving the beans themselves. So there, let these cool a little bit. Beans are ready. So after 25 minutes, the sofrito looks like this. It has a nice golden, deep brown color. And we add one medium leek, green and white parts to this mix. Now, uh, some garlic, three cloves of garlic. And this should take about four minutes. Now add your carrots, two carrots thinly sliced on the diagonal. Coat with that flavoring and the oil. Two ribs of celery. Again, celery and carrots were in the sofrito, but now you'll have visible pieces. One large red potato, zucchini, one medium zucchini sliced thinly and quartered, and lastly, the string beans. One quarter of a pound of beautiful fresh green beans. It smells very good. Okay, so this is getting ready. Now your other ingredients. One 28-ounce can of plum tomatoes. The San Marzanos are very excellent. Uh, a quarter of a head of Savoy cabbage. That's the nice crinkly cabbage. It's been chiffonaded finely. This adds a very nice texture to your minestrone. And then, oh, this is something. I don't know if you've seen it in the grocery store. It's cavolo nero, which is the Italian black kale. Very tasty and so good for you. So full of iron and other uh, fantastic uh, vitamins and minerals. So you need one bunch, about five ounces of that. And uh, four cups of vegetable stock and about four cups of the bean cooking water. And it's very nice to have all your ingredients ready before you really start doing this part of the soup. Okay, we're gonna add our tomatoes. Now the tomatoes you just crush with a spoon, with your fingers, and add the juice. You hear the cooking stop, raise the heat a little bit. So now it's starting to look like minestrone. And now the cabbage. Mm, I love cabbage cooked in anything. That must be my Polish heritage. Very pretty. 
and then the kale, which I also love now. This is a fantastic kale. And now you can add also four cups of vegetable stock. If you happen to have it, and you should save rinds of Parmesan cheese in your freezer so you can add that to the soup. A chunk of prosciutto, like a four ounce end, and a bay leaf. Some red hot pepper flakes. Start with a quarter of a teaspoon. You may find that you like more, but a quarter of a teaspoon really adds a lot of flavor to the soup. And four cups of the bean liquid. So here we have six cups. I will pour in four. There. A little bit of salt and a little bit of black pepper. Bring to a boil, reduce to a simmer, cover, and cook for one hour. So after one hour, add your beans, the cooked beans, right into the soup. These have to now cook for another 20 minutes, and your minestrone will be ready to serve. Covered. And we have one that's all done, finally. And let's show you what it looks like served. Put a nice big serving right there. And then some of the broth. Crusty toasted Italian bread. A little spoon of homemade basil pesto right on top. Parmesan cheese. Let that cheese just melt into the hot soup and serve Italian minestrone, the peasant soup from all the ingredients in your pantry. Very delicious. And now you know how to make it. Now I'd like to show you how to make a cream soup, a spinach cream soup. Uh, classic cream soups were traditionally based on bechamel, which is essentially milk thickened by a roux. But today, uh, you're just as likely to be served a cream soup that's based on a velouté, which is made by thickening stock with a roux. And to start with the roux, five tablespoons of butter into a pot like this. And now into the five tablespoons of butter, first add one onion that's been finely chopped. A yellow onion is good. So cook this for about five minutes until translucent. Have four cups of chicken stock ready. We're using a chicken stock. If you are a vegetarian, of course you can use a vegetable stock. Now while your onions are turning translucent, blanch your spinach. Salted water boiling on high. Two pounds of washed spinach leaves. And do a few leaves at a time and you just pretty much dunk them and remove them into a ice bath. By doing this, what you're really doing is getting the moisture out of the leaves, believe it or not, since you're putting it in moisture, but look at the color, and you're trying to preserve the color. Use one of these spiders. It really makes the task very easy. Oh, see now, the onions are almost translucent, almost time to add the flour and start cooking down the roux. Well, let's finish this spinach first. This is not a long process, it's very easy. And notice why I put a strainer into the ice water. That way I don't have any ice in my spinach. Smart. So there. And now get this also into your towel. This process is used for getting the excess moisture out of a lot of things. If you're making cabbage pierogi, for example, you would be steaming your cabbage and squeezing out the excess moisture. So here we have our spinach. Two pounds have been reduced to this more insignificant amount, but plenty for our velouté. And now to proceed with the roux, add 
quarter of a cup plus one tablespoon of all-purpose flour. Stir that into the butter mixture. Cook this for one minute, stirring constantly. You're cooking the flour, but we want the flour to enable the soup to thicken. And that's what it's going to do. And the onions are tender enough now so that they too can be pureed along with the spinach leaves to make that nice silky velouté that we're talking about. And now we add four cups of homemade chicken stock. Of course, you can use store-bought. Now raise the heat, stir, and cook until it comes to a boil. See, it looks very watery, but this will thicken up, and it should reach the consistency of heavy cream once it comes to a boil. And then reduce the heat to a simmer. So our velouté is done. I just want to show you what it looks like. Let's see, it looks like the consistency of heavy cream, and it coats the back of a spoon. A little hard to see because of the color, but um, it is exactly the right consistency. And now, if you have a powerful blender, you can use a blender or you could use a food processor. Um, put some spinach in, a couple of scoops of the hot velouté. And be very careful when you turn this on that the cover is on well and tight. <laughs> Sounds like you're at the dentist. Mmm, beautiful. And this goes right into a strainer. <gasps> Look at the color. And what a beautiful thing to serve to guests. Takes a little while to put it through the sieve, but it is worth it. To enrich it, add a little bit of fat, like heavy cream. And cream soups are best served right after preparing, especially when using green vegetables. And if you don't serve it right away, it will lose some of its vibrancy. Mm. Look how beautiful. And this kind of soup warrants taking out your very best soup bowls. Now that is a phenomenal looking soup. So beautiful and so elegant. So if you'd like to garnish the spinach soup or any velouté soup, making tiny little croutons like this is a very elegant way to finish off an elegant soup. These are um, French bread. I'm browning them very carefully in a little bit of olive oil. You could use a little butter if you like. And you can make these ahead of time. Oh, see how pretty, look at the color. If you were doing a pea soup, you would garnish with some fresh peas. But just that on top, that little crunchiness spinach soup at its very best. Learning how to make these classic soups is a valuable lesson for the home cook. Success lies in using the best ingredients and combining them well, seasoning them correctly and cooking them just enough to bring out their elemental flavors. Thanks very much for watching this edition of Martha's Cooking School, and I'll see you at the next lesson.